So now this takes me to the next point. Uh, first, I'd like to say first thing that like in the telecom sector, we have and telecom and banking, we have African companies branching into other African markets. But definitely we want to have people from outside uh, the African continent, you know, being able to enter the market, establish their presence and grow. So let's focus now on Nigeria. What you've talked a bit about the fact that not, not a lot of investment is entering the country. So in terms of the appetite global businesses have, uh, international companies have for, for Africa, for Nigeria, would you say this is, how would you quantify it? Is it large? Is it not enough? Well, no. well I think, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. So we've had, um, um, we've had uh, uh, less than $3 billion of foreign direct investment in 2019, which is about half the amount of Ghana, even though Ghana's economy is, you know, one sixth or one seventh the size. Most of that investment was still in oil and gas. So very little very little for the size of the economy. So, you know, why is that? I mean, people see the demographics, but I think when they come and they look uh, closely at the country, they still find it too difficult to do business. I mean, to begin with, it's a small thing, but it has a big impact as people come in to the airport. It's not a, a pleasant experience. They've been to, I mean, even our neighbor in Benin with the Lome Airport is beautiful, right? And obviously Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire Airport. And, but it's the first time that people see the country. In fact, well, not even necessarily the first time they've interacted because, of course, they had to go through the visa process. So if they've gone through the full visa process, that's not very easy. Uh, visa on arrival may be a little bit easier, but still the problem with visa on arrival is when you get to the airport, again, it's a bit unpleasant. It's hard to come out of the airport in, in Lagos and you know, find how to get out. It's chaotic. If you're coming at night at the first time, I think it's a little bit frightening. But beyond that, more critically, it's still called too complex, <coughs> excuse me, too complex to do business in Nigeria. So we have too many NDAs at the federal level uh, who have overlapping responsibilities. And rather than deal with, with that issue, um, um, you know, we've got Hebec, which has worked very, very hard to improve the business environment here. It is run by Dr. Jamoke, who's you know, national heroin, but but they haven't simplified or made it easier to do to do business. So it's expensive, it's complex. Um, you get confused by different uh, agencies. Then you also have, obviously, to some extent, the kind of informal factor. So people, you try to go through the formal process and then other people are suggesting you go through a, a less formal uh, process and bypass that. But what are the rules of engagement? And that's not feasible for really a multinational anyway. So all of that is very confusing to people. And then if we have an issue like the exchange rate regime, which is confusing for investors to come in. So the totality, you know, when you add that all up and then people go to Ghana, people go to Kenya, people go to Ethiopia, they may be smaller markets, but they just say, this is where I want to put my next uh, next investment into Africa. And, uh, and I think it, it's really coming to a, uh, how would we say it? It's coming to a crisis point for the country because, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't get investment, not just from outsiders, but also from Nigerians, um, we can't grow sufficiently to reduce poverty or reduce alleviate uh, unemployment. Uh, and we all know we're the poverty capital of the world with 100 million people in absolute poverty. So the total investment that we need, uh, an economist like myself would say roughly, we need about 26 to 29 percent of GDP reinvested in the economy every year to grow six to eight percent. We're only getting about 16, 17 percent, so 60 percent. Uh, not much more than half of, of what we need. And so we only grow at 2%, right? And of course, 2% mm -hmm. is not really growth because our population is growing probably close to 3%. So people are getting poor and poor in, in uh, Nigeria. And we've had this happen in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, almost surely in 2021. So, you know, it, it's, uh, Nigeria needs to reverse this and needs to make itself... Um, uh, an investor-friendly destination, as I said, because of the demographics and weight of the country, everyone's going to have a look at Nigeria, but they're only going to invest if it's a good environment. So this is an urgent task for the government, and it's made more difficult by COVID because in 2020, there aren't going to be any uh, foreign direct investors who actually come to the country anymore. But we need to prepare better for the day when foreign direct investors will be traveling and you know, sort it out, sort it out from there.